So this the other day, this is about design. I saw a girl, right, with ginger hair, but great tits. <laughs> oh, come on, you know that's a dilemma. <laughs> Relax, it was a joke, it was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke, I like ginger hair girls, I'm married to a ginger hair girl and I'm bald, so I can't really take the piss, can I? I mean, obviously we are hoping the kids take after me. <laughs> The four-day workshop, right, what we tend to do is people who apply to come on the course generally have a, a foundation in performing and writing comedy, or at least performing. Um, we tend to have people who are, for example, DJs or uh, people who have been told by various friends that they're funny in the pub, and what they want to do is translate funny in the pub into I can make it, I can get paid for doing it, or it can at least give it my best ever shot. I always think it's fascinating that people say you can't teach someone how to be funny and I would disagree with that completely. There's a technique and a rule involved with comedy along with any other vocation. If you can teach someone how to act at drama school and if you can teach someone how to dance at dance school, I don't see how you can't teach someone how to be funny. I thought, well, actually, if you knew some of the tasks and some of the tricks and of the trade, you might have a better chance. Same with stand-up. You know, I just realised, having done it for so long, that there's loads of things you can teach about the form of it. So I started doing the courses. The idea of you set up and punchline is in every single book and in the teaching. It's always, you know, set up, punch, set up, punch. But, and, and they can read any number of books and do it, but actually doing it here and doing it as a group and doing it in pairs is much better for you. So the first thing I think is uh, you'll need another piece of paper, uh, which you're going to get out in writing for me in best, and I need you now to write me a joke. That's a joke you've already heard, not one of your own. So we teach them the theoretical techniques of it, we teach them how to handle a microphone, we teach them how to present themselves on stage and how to find a character, and basically we take what they've got and we hone it in. How to write jokes. Um, let's have a look and see what you've got. Uh, man walks into a bar, love to see that, aren't we? Well, they just refurbished it and they didn't have glasses on. That's, that's interesting, we've twisted that one to make it like slightly less good. Um, <laughs> why did the punk cross the road because he was stapled to the chicken? Yeah, did you see? A good traditional road and chicken in there, you see. Double mention of the chicken, very good. Poultry, always good in comedy. Write that down. Um, <laughs> good. So my favourite yeah. joke is, man goes to the dentist and he says, Doctor, I think I'm a moth. And the dentist says, no, no, you want a doctor, what are you coming here for? He goes, well, your light was on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way you tell them, isn't it? <laughs> what we have in the structure of these jokes, as those who have read your books on comedy will know, is the setup and the punchline. And essentially, all jokes are comprised of these two sentences, set up and punch line. You can call it other things. You can call it the... The feed and the gag, the lead up and the twist, or whatever you want, but it is the setup of the punchline. The first day we film them uh, with their material that they've written before they've come, then what we do is go through the basic rules of comedy and technique of comedy. I really like the Irish. I mean, I love everything <coughs> they do, their culture, the beer. I'm actually Irish myself, you know, I just tan beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it'd be interesting if we had a, a Welsh version of uh, Countdown. I wonder how it would run. I'll have a consonant, please, Carol. <laughs> another consonant. <laughs> and another. <laughs> Twelve more consonants, please, Carol. At the end of the day, they found out that it was about eight people out of 72 yeah, were found to have their drinks spiked. Now, obviously, you read the paper and it says things like, well, you know, oh, it must have been gangs, you'd mean gangs, or, or drug, drug addicts, you know, you people doing it. I don't think people are looking, I think they're missing something here. I think, at the end of the day, I think you're missing out the ugly people. You really are. Yeah. I know you might find this hard to believe, but I actually have managed to uh, do the, uh, you know, hoo hoo a couple of times before. Fair enough, he was a gypsy. <laughs> my mum had a brilliant mind. She hid it brilliantly, which basically made my mum a triple threat in terms of winning female of her generation. And, um, well, here I am standing here entertaining you all, and I've got ADHD as well. So, um, but. Uh,
when I'm on the medicine. It's um, a little bit better. Those strange dinosaur hands that dinosaurs have. Do you know what I mean? Very strange. You know, try playing scissors, stone, paper with these. <laughs> 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 it's very strange. And uh, uh, I was going to go bungee jumping, but something just snapped. One thing you really need to have, and what you're saying is lacking there, is surprise. 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 Because all, all jokes are a surprise. They have to be. That's what that, that two lines make. It's a surprise to you. Because the, the bigger question is what is laughter? And what is it for? An audience. That's, that's the first part of the job. Lesson number one. That's all. <laughs> The reason they came to us was motivators tell us what the first thing is we should do. And all we can do is set people off. We can say, well, this is what you do next. Yeah. And then when you've done that, you do this. We run a sketch club every Wednesday downstairs at the King's Head, which you are welcome if you feel so inclined that once you've got the confidence and the set to come ahead and do five minutes at. Because that is the proper test. It's OK doing it in front of people here, but uh, five minutes in front of the crowd. On the other side of the coin, Exclusion. Uh, what do you think about sexist jokes, racist jokes? Any thoughts? So where are the taboos? Where, know, are, why the taboos? Do, well, where are the taboos? Why do um, black people smell? <laughs> so that blind people can hate them too. <laughs> Racism and exclusion, you, you know, it, it's not such a big issue at the moment, I guess. But what about the Edda Everidge? Um, I've, I've seen her, him. Mm. Um, saying, pointed, pick out somebody in the audience and say, oh, I, you must be black, I can only see your teeth. Right. Stuff like that. Well, I think it depends on... Well, I think on... it was very funny when he said it. I mean, everybody... Silly. Silly laughter. And, you know, how do you create silliness? You can't say kids are spastic and you can't say they're special. You can't yeah. say they're challenged. You're mentally challenged, you're physically challenged. And so kids, being clever now, what they do, they go, uh, challenged! <laughs> <laughs> That David Blaine twat, right? <laughs> As we call him affectionately in this country. Well, why did he do it? If he'd done that in any city in the States, in his little glass box, right? On his elaborate diet, whatever it was, right? If he'd done that in the States, there'd be millions of people queuing up to support him and go, yeah, Dave, whoop, been cheering. What does he get in London? Blaine, you wanker! <laughs> Drivers, by the way, don't even turn around to see you in the cab anymore. They don't care in London. You may as well not even be in the fucking cab. Right. Seriously, so tonight, go out, get some back for the people. Open up a cab door, say Brixton, thanks, mate. <laughs> Shut the door, watch him drive off. <laughs> you come here, and people basically stay in London, the biggest, most professional city in the world. It's, I do my job really well. I've had a good night out. I've been funny. Okay, this is what keeps you in London funny, man. You make me fucking laugh. And that's what the pressure is on London that I like. I do live in the East End of Newcastle. I was back there yesterday. I was in one of them everything from pound shops. <laughs> Bought myself a nice house. <laughs> the interesting thing is because you're on a stage um, with a huge audience, they, they see your face, but they've got to be able to read all those tiny little things in your so, face. Yeah. Yes, that's the word, thank you. Mm. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I was struggling with. <laughs> He doesn't move from the mic, you know, since so he's got the mic in front. He leaves the mic on the stand. And it's just like, uh, and, and again, he moves in the face. And it's like, very, very controlled. His worldview is like, very high status, very controlled. What I was thinking of was that expression on his face, that sort of expressions he pulls in. Amused, kind of. Amused, yes. Amused, yeah. Well, just, he does the character awesome. so well, Louis, switches characters. Yeah, and so he's yeah. Morphism, he's, yeah. yeah he's, he throws something at you like a joke, and then goes, don't ask me why. And yeah. he's, he's like yeah. pointing you with things, okay, and he's yeah. like, I don't know why they do it, they just do. It. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, well, he seems to be one of us, sort of thing. He doesn't yeah. seem to be like saying, I know more, and this is how it is. He yeah. seems to be like, let's all work this out together. Yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. <laughs> now, has anybody here been to China? No. Nice yeah, town. <laughs> they ride a lot of bikes in China, a lot of bike riders, and if you ever thought road rage was bad here, try telling somebody to fuck off when you got no windshield between you. <laughs> kind of ride up beside them and go, I saw what you did back there, dickhead. <laughs> Fucking the ring, 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 ring. 
personally, I pretty much have always been a bit cocksure on myself to a certain degree as far as being cocky and lively with people. So I pretty much just thought, well, I've got to do something with it because people kept pointing out to me that I was funny, um, naturally funny. So I thought, well, maybe it's worth doing something about it because I don't really want to be in warehousing for the rest of my days. I mean, I think you need a foundation, but I also don't think anyone's going to come on the course who actually isn't inspired by comedy or loves comedy, because you wouldn't want to put yourself through a course in something you're not interested in. Basically, if, 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 if you need to be told how to do comedy in that kind of way, I would sort of walk away from the place, because you're probably never going to learn anything at all. What you need would be is different statuses, and six will be the highest. Now, do you know what I mean by high status? Yeah. High status would be the most important person in the room. Sure. I'm standing here, I'm looking at you now, very high status. I'm looking on you, I'm looking really down on yeah. you. You'll be really right. Okay, you're coming, you're late. Right, you're late. Yeah. Really, really, yeah. I mean, in awesome. control. And the fun will be that each of you will get a number for your status. So I want you to just act that status. And let's just find out what your status is going to be. That's yours. Okay, don't show anyone else. Um, that'll be yours. Um, yours, George, you're, uh, that's yours, right, don't show anyone else. Um, you, oh, you're three days. Okay. Um, you, uh, look, you, sir, and that's yours, right? Okay, so all get up, um, all my uh, teachers, come up and come around to here. You can come in in whatever order, I mean, and obviously I'll act your roles again, the same again, and you do the same, um, guessing. Okay. So, go with the patient, the positive bell, if you like. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, can you just move? Okay. It's also to do with acting, and there's a book called Improv Games by Johnson or something like that. And um, <laughs> actors get trained to do improv, and they get trained to do uh, mask games and role playing and things like that. Um, but most of the sort of stuff about the comedian status, which which we didn't film, is stuff that I've kind of developed through just observing. What are we playing at? Don't you shut up! Hold up, hold up! Don't you shut this situation! This is a task. Thank you very much, love. Thank you for joining us. Not now. I not now. I thought The, the guests is what put them in order again. Put them in order there. I'm myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, innuendo, eh? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, there you are. Yeah. See? Um, it showed that it was fairly easy to pick um, where, where people are in a peck of order. Basically, I'll carry on writing um, what I wrote yesterday, basically. Right. Uh, uh, there were... There were no other change. I'll go through it, I'll go through it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, right. Ugh, you got any coffee? Uh, no, but I can show you the front of the house. Bye. Um, you can get into some sticky situations. You can see with all eight of us all coming from different angles, like, you know, Ryan, as we know, is very, very good on the, you know, the jokes there, word for word for word. You know, you're, you're kind of halfway in the middle. You've got all the material there, and you've got all the... Uh, and it's interesting seeing you having to do it without any of the... Forming. What you'll see is stuff that you wouldn't laugh at being applauded by a group of people who aren't really that qualified to discuss. And so you'll have some limp bloke just saying, oh, yeah, my girlfriend, right, she's really, really nice, but uh, she's dead. <laughs> and, uh, right? and that's it. And I'll be, oh, that's hilarious because she was dead all along and wasn't really alive and that's brilliant. Oh, right. And then you'll have some bloke who never really made it on the circuit stepping and going, that's great, what you really did there then, what, what you did there was great and what I'd like you to do this time is really think about it as a kind of more of a conceptual kind of, uh, no, okay, so how would you feel if your girlfriend was really dead? You did, oh, sh In fact, I think medicine is like the ideal strip club where the audience gets paid for watching nudity. And it's so easy to do. I mean, you go, oh, Miss Williams, please go behind the screen and take off your blouse. Thank you very much. And she's like, but I only have a broken toenail. And I'm like, I think I know what I'm doing, darling. So just not go and take it off. Yeah, the first one, not so funny. Uh, what was it? Yeah, well, I, I think it, it should keep simpler. I think she should just go with the fact that basically me and the medicine like on a big strip, you know. Uh, I'm in the, you know, who we got on the operating table, you know, has she got the big see-through shoes on, you know, is there a pole, you know, go with the analogy of, of, of the fact that you're there because it's like a strip club. Because I was getting so bitter and twisted about it and I couldn't stop myself in my rant, yeah. I tried to change the character and make myself into a character, 
to that thing because it's easier. Okay. And then I've become this overly nice northern person who's okay. like, oh, I'm using the babies, oh, the middle place. Okay. And then slide them off. All right. La, 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 la. Another good thing about having children is um, turning into being a boring bastard. I love that. I love that. I mean, you wear striper scarves and uh, you book up Starbucks. I mean, who needs shoes, expensive holidays and food time when you can stink a curdled milk? Well, I think you need to find a stronger opening there with that. I mean, because you're coming on stage and, um, e the miracle of Earth, eh? Um, you know, they, well, you go all the way through to the Ikea and then you go to the Saw Park and the Ikea. I love the fact that they, they don't take any shit. If you're rubbish, they're letting you know you're rubbish. They see a woman coming up, they're like that. Oh, for God's sake. So, yeah, it is harder as a woman. Um, but also, when they love you, you know they love you. You come on stage and they just... They're all standing in their feet, they're banging on tables, they're shouting, they're screaming, they're just a lot more vociferous with their opinions, which is what I love, because you know what, when you're doing well. The main ism for me is, is sexism, and there is still a big divide between male and female comics, and that is that female audiences have got, have got issues with laughing at female comics. Um, yeah, it's hard as women because they're shit, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, it's harder for women because they have to put up with people like him saying things like that in the fucking dressing room. No, uh, that's not that yeah. You get that on the yeah. chair. Um, no, white females are usually rubbish. I mean, they're not very good stand-ups. For blokes sees a woman showing off, on the whole they're alright with it. If a woman sees a woman showing off, which is effectively what stand-up is showing off, they, can, they sometimes feel a bit threatened by it. Now, most realise it is just stand-up and it's about telling jokes. But some women just can't laugh at women trying to be funny. But someone said to me, OK, then, we're going to give you a perceived hindrance. Would you rather be black or would you rather be female? Oh, I'm not, not carrying anything to do with gender in my life or anything like that. As a comic, I'd much rather be black. See, the thing is, uh, some f female comics are shit, but a whole heap of men comics are crap as well. At the end of the day, there's a lot more crap men comics than there are women comics, uh, you know. In fact, there are more crap men comics than there are women comics total. So, obviously, if there's only three women comics working on the circuit, and one of them's crap, that's a very large percentage of crap women comics. No, don't tell me I like to try and guess. You've taken too many drugs. No. You've taken enough drugs. No. You'd like some drugs. No. You've got a milk bottle stuck up your bottom. I fell on it. A likely story. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this right you can look ahead. funny. That's it. Funny is funny. And I think that laughter is an involuntary action. If you say something funny, a girl in the audience is not going to go, I'm not going to love you because you're another girl and I have issues. I think that's a bit of a myth that women have issues with other women. Like the funniest people I know are women. And the best, the best, um, the most generous audiences you have are women. No, you're surrounded by pissed up fucking arseholes, to be honest. Uh, some of the clubs are beautiful to play uh, in Camden or, what, uh, or, or uh, um, maybe better see. Sometimes they're hell on earth. Um, then, it, then you've got the Comedy Store, which is London, Manchester and Leeds. Again, that's very, very high uh, 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 professional qualifications to play that. Uh, you know, it'll take you years to get in there. Down the bottom end is the amateur circuit and all those clubs in time out. This is this week in London. One, two, three pages, four, five pages. Yeah six uh, pages there. The list of all the venues are there. Most of them are shitty rooms above pubs. Shitty, shitty, shitty. And I, I give you no illusion, they're run by people who are fairly amateur. They, they just think it's a good idea to run a comedy club. Go and watch a lot of comedy. And I don't mean go to the comedy store on a Saturday night where you're watching the top echelons, where you're watching people who've been doing it 10, 15 years and can do it effortlessly. Go to, you know, your small pubs, watch six or seven up and coming comics, try some stuff. Watch what works, and more importantly, watch what doesn't. Try and work out why they're not getting laughs. You know, that's the thing. You know, is it learn from other people's mistakes because you will learn from your own. But any learning you do from other people's is a lot less painful. <laughs> you are a commodity. Package yourself well. Pay attention to your image, your appearance, and your delivery. We have we covered delivery. We've covered your image, your persona, but um, your appearance. Um, you know, Stuart. Uh, well, all of us. I mean, we're fairly casual here. Um, everyone dresses like this. I don't on stage. I'm a German. But um, wear a suit. Wear something. Well, no, no, no. I think yes. You could wear a suit. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. For God's sakes, be different in an overcrowded market. Be different. What about girls? So different. Naked. And I'm one of these people. I do as I'm told. So when the when the teacher told me that female comedians shouldn't wear makeup, 
and shouldn't wear nice clothes because it distracts from the humour. I believed her. And for years, I sort of like slopped around the comedy circuit with no makeup, my hair scraped back, you know, combat trousers, baggy t-shirts, and God forbid I look nice on stage. And now I'm like, it's show business, for God's sake. I can't do it in accent. No, no, or as you, <laughs> just as you, yes. The yes! I can do it. So I don't you scream it and then make her do it at the same level. Yes! Yes! That's it. That's you can do it. So, I want to do no performance. I want you to have your hands by your side and be completely deadpan. There are rules to be learned, no matter how much of a natural comedian you are. There are rules. There are certain things yeah. that work and that don't work, and that are certain things that will never work. So from the yeah, from the top. So just, yeah. Okay, go from the top. I'd like you to do it as you're with your hands in pockets, but but not to restrict you, like I did with uh, Ryan, but just to make it yeah. cash. You're on the golf course. Do yeah. you play golf? Not really. Not really. Do you have that? Still have Um. On heroin, you absolutely do so many strange things that you just wouldn't dream of doing sober. I got married. <laughs> <laughs> I hate short people. <laughs> okay, my wife's short, but she's got BBs, so it doesn't count. <laughs> so it got me thinking, and uh, I mean, the most obvious reason, of course, is why we do medicine is to see people naked, <laughs> which is quite shameful, but at least I'm being honest. <laughs> then there's drugs. Not so much the actual taking of drugs on their own, but rather mixing of inappropriate drugs. For instance, we had a rather nasty spate recently of people taking LSD and cocaine, which is a bad choice because the last thing you want with hallucinations is confidence. This <laughs> 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 flying lark's easy. All you need is a tall billion and a long run-up. Who's with me? <laughs> I was good with a discus, yeah? The gym bloke, he goes to me, Keith, you are shit at sports. You really are shit at sports, yeah? Hold this and throw it. It was like something out of 2001. It really was, yeah? <laughs> Going into this, just so I went... Dun, 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 dun. Oi, oi, me, throw, discuss, go far. Oh. Yeah, I, lo I love babies, because they're, they're intuitive, aren't they? They're intuitive. They, uh, they always know when you've got a brand new outfit on, don't they? Because they manage to vomit on every single bit of it. They do, they do, it's a gift. Yeah, well, I've got um, a D. That's attention deficit. Oh, ADD, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, attention deficit disorder. What is it? Disease. It means I get easily distracted. <laughs> um, I often go off at uh, tangent. Oh, did I tell you my name? <laughs> uh, my sister uh, made the mistake of getting married recently. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> It was a beautiful wedding, beautiful wedding, and uh, it was a lovely service, and, but afterwards we didn't actually throw confetti, we threw rice. I made the massive mistake of cooking the rice before I, uh, before I threw it, and I, you know, throwing it, and some of the photos are awful, you know, there was a photo of them getting into the car, and they're smiling, big beard on my sister, <laughs> cooked rice, very awful. We do it nice and slow now, I like the thing about it, because some of the girls, Come to the clubs where I work. You could try it and try, uh, try, try it like this. Yeah. Um, I thought it was cool. Um, I think uh, it was obvious that the ten weeks was narrowed down to four days. As a teacher, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was cool. I think it had a lot of yeah, a, a lot of very useful you know, information. There is a very fine line to be drawn, I think, between the the theory side of it and the practical side of it. And you've got to be able to have someone who knows how to teach, who knows how to be capable of, of, of giving that advice as well as practically showing people this is how you do it, this is how you hold a microphone. And it sounds simple, but unless you know it, unless you've got 15 years of experience, then you can't do it. He did do the normal clubs, but he was never one for hanging around for five years on a crap circuit, you know, listening to nonsense from sort of uh, uh, would-be respected long-term comedians. <laughs> Mark is... Uh is a remarkable character in that he's, <laughs> he's worked in so many different areas of, of, the, of, the, of the business as a creative. He's, he's, a, he's worked at the top, the top end of the circuit as a stand-up comedian. He's had a very successful um, television drama series as a writer on ITV, Network ITV. He's had three novels published. Um, it seems that whatever 
Mark attempts to do, he's good at it. Mm. Those who can, it's like those who can do and those who can't run comedy courses. Have you seen this show, new show, The Catherine Tate Show? It's on a Monday night. You saw it. Um, she was an ex-student of mine. She did the course. Um, I did the two courses at City University, and out of that, she did the course about six years ago. Um, one called Jenny Colvin, who's a novelist, wrote Amanda's Wedding, was a huge book hit. Um, several guys are now writing for TV and radio. Um, there are stand-ups, Mark Lucero, uh, Rudy Liquid, and Gina Yasharai, who are doing very, very well live around the country, who are top paid comedians. I always used to open my show in the same way. I would walk into the day room and say, Hi, everybody! Oof. Those who responded were sent for trial. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you. I'm now agony uncle, you know. I'm a good agony. I, I will give you advice and whatever you want to know. Uh, I tell you, I was the kind of uncle a girl could turn to, you know, in time of distress. Perhaps her callous boyfriend, you know, has treated her roughly, and I will counsel her in my chambers, you know, and she will be quite happy, <laughs> unable to shy her correctly for a week. But, <laughs> <laughs> really but I don't think you can teach somebody talent. You can't teach somebody to be funny. Yeah, at the end of the day, I think comedy is 70% personality, 30% gags. You could have the funniest gags in the world, but if you get up on stage and the audience don't like you, they don't connect with you, they're not going to laugh. It's that simple. So, um, you can't teach someone to be funny. Uh, I think it brings, I think Mike's right. I think that people that teach comedy, whatever, <laughs> suck. But, I have an add-on to your thing, is yeah. that... It will also bring a person that may be talented into the comedy realm. I think I think it'll it'll give him a little bit of confidence to actually bring up what the fuck he says. So, yeah, I yeah, no, that's, I yeah, no, that's, that's a very good point. I, I wish, wish we thought that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, I had all day off today, uh, yeah, I was pretty much going through all the lines, I was changing some of it as well, yeah, so basically I, I actually got cut a lot of stuff out. Uh, it's probably, I should say, about three minutes of material, but I'll give myself another minute on top because of the way I do it, do you know what I mean? I've got to take that into account, so yeah, hopefully uh, you know, I'll, I'll just about hit four minutes as long as I don't ramble on too much. So. He's always trying something new, he's always trying to make people laugh. Um, the more he tries, um, the more annoying he can be, but um, yeah, when he's when he's sort of not trying, you catch him off guard. He is a funny guy. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome our guest this evening, Mr. Keith McDonald. <laughs> flooding in London, yeah? I've got an idea. I'm looking forward to being a father one day, I really am. Because yeah. my father passed on a couple of traits to me. Ah, dear. Dogs, eh? Dogs, man, and best friend. Is that the best best friend we could fucking ever have, yeah? A dog. An animal which has the capacity, yeah, to eat its own crap. That is not good, is it? A dog that doesn't remember it's his own goddamn crap. So there's the dog, obviously, he's like... As soon as I walked on, you know, I said blah, 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 that woman gave me some material as soon as I said any guys in the audience, a female sort of nice one, great stuff that is, um, you know, no, uh, the nurse pretty much went after that, I just had to, you know, move it, it was shorter so I felt a bit more confident you know, to, to be able to remember it, who wants to be a comedian, um, just, just be open, just be open minded, just um, be confident, but at the same time, just ask about what you've done. What do, you, do you think that's okay? Do you mind? Don't be afraid to get negative comments. To try and you can turn them into positive. Do you mind? Um, yeah, just just go for it. Give it a shot. Otherwise, one day you're going to say, "Well, you know, I could have done that, but it didn't work out." That's because you didn't try. Basically, just give it a shot. So don't be afraid of it. If you fail, you fail. Shit happens. Do you know it's life.
That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Mm -hmm.